Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to my kitchen for another video. My name is Derek from Sandnet Nutrition and today I'm going to be sharing an awesome recipe with you guys. I'm going to show you how to make this amazing burrito and if you don't like burritos, you can leave. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going to show you how to make this incredible burrito bowl. So let's do this. So I have gone ahead and put the recipe in the description box down below for you guys so you can come back and refer to it anytime you need. So just sit back and enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. So I thought this would be a really fun recipe to show you guys because there's so many different little elements to this burrito. We're going to be making a bunch of different things and I thought it would be cool to show you all the things that I'm making to put in there because you guys could use these on their own. They don't always have to go into a burrito, but they should. <laughs> so today I'm going to be showing you how to make an amazing seasoned rice that is so delicious, it's so simple, it'll blow your mind. And then also some refried beans, which are amazing as well. And then some sauteed veggies and this amazing pico de gallo. If you guys are not familiar with it yet, you will be after this video because it is so, so good. And it's a little bit different than the salsa and I'll tell you guys why when we're making this. But yeah, this is a really good little weapon to have in your uh, recipe arsenal. So when I go to make something in the kitchen, I always like to think what's gonna take the longest to cook? And then I always start with that. So in this case, the brown rice is definitely gonna take the longest. So I started that already just uh, to get a jump on things. So to make it is really, really easy. I just basically rinse the brown rice and then instead of adding all water, I just substituted some of the water out for salsa. And then I'm just gonna cook it like that. And you guys will be surprised, but it actually turns out really, really nice. And of course, you could add extra spices and seasonings if you want. You could add some fresh tomato or tomato paste or whatever. Uh, but yeah, it's gonna turn out really, really good just like this. And then the next thing that you're gonna wanna make is the pico de gallo. And not because this takes so long to cook or anything, you actually don't have to cook it at all, but you do wanna let it sit aside for about 15 minutes to 20 minutes or even longer than that because the flavors all mix together and it tastes so much better after that amount of time. So uh, I'll show you guys how I did this here. So to make this, it's really simple, but you wanna make sure that you have really nice and fresh ingredients and ripe tomatoes are really key for this recipe. So you wanna make sure that they're nice and deep red and ripe. We don't wanna be making this with any pink tomatoes. So you wanna finely chop these up and if you were like lazy or you're pressed for time, I'm sure you could just pulse this in like a food processor. So you want to put all the tomato you just chopped into a nice big mixing bowl. Gosh, I hope this bowl is big enough. <laughs> so it's good to make a bunch of this at once because you'll find it only gets better over the course of like a few days. So the next thing you're going to want to do is dice an onion. And again, you want to chop this fairly small. You don't want any massive chunks of onion in this. So the difference between a salsa and a pico de gallo is that pico de gallo is using like fresher ingredients. Salsa uses like uh, roasted and stewed tomatoes. All right, so this next ingredient here is gonna upset some of you. <laughs> so we've got some cilantro that we're gonna be putting in there. So you could, of course, leave this out if you really wanted to, but this is gonna add a lot of flavor to it. Uh, but if you don't like it, it's obviously not gonna work for you. So I'm just putting the stems and everything in there. It's all edible. So next, we're going to use the juice of a couple limes. And next, we're just going to add a little bit of salt. And of course, this is optional, but the salt actually does help uh, not only like bring out the flavors, but it helps to release some of the liquids from the tomato and the onions and other things, and it helps it all kind of uh, meld together. And then you just mix it up. Oh yeah, and I should say that traditionally you are supposed to put some spicy serrano jalapeno peppers in here. However, I just don't really love the spice that those peppers give to food, so I'm gonna leave them out, but it is definitely an option to put those in there. So once you have the pico de gallo all chopped up and mixed and everything like that, you basically just wanna put a lid on it and put it in the fridge for about 15 minutes. Uh, and it's even good like the next day and the day after that. So you don't have to make this like right as you're gonna cook. You could always make it ahead of time or in advance. Uh, and these are really cool. If you guys don't know about these, these are these little like silicone lids that you can obviously wash and reuse over and over again. And uh, yeah, they're super handy to have. And look at that, they even suction on. Well, will it hold this? Let's see. <laughs> and the fridge. Next you're gonna wanna chop up some veggies. Veggies. What the heck? <laughs> veggies and sauteed in my mind. Get your veggies. Next you're gonna wanna chop up some veggies to saute. And today I'm gonna be using red bell pepper, green bell pepper, some onion, and mushroom. And as usual I'm just gonna add a little splash of water to help everything start to saute. 
And then we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of garlic powder and onion powder to this, as if you guys would expect anything less from me at this point. All right, so next we're gonna be making the star of the show. So we're gonna be making the refried beans. Well, they're not actually like refried because we're not, they haven't been fried like once even. So I don't know what I should call these. If you guys have a suggestion, leave it in the comments down below. Basically, it's gonna be like those uh, cans that you find at the stores of like refried beans. I know that Amy's sells like a really good one and I'm always so tempted because I know it's so delicious, but then I turn the can around and I look at the sodium content of it and it is just like way too high for me to justify. So I decided to mimic that and make my own. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that here today, right now. <laughs> so here's everything that's going into these beans. Uh, so we've obviously got some beans. This is uh, two cans of rinsed beans. And then we've got a variety of spices here. Garlic powder, onion powder, chili spice, cumin, some salt. We're also gonna be adding some nutritional yeast. And then just recently got these little jalapenos. I'm gonna be adding these as well. I got nacho slices? That's I know, it's so random, eh? <laughs> so we're gonna make this really simple. First thing I'm gonna do is just fire these right into the pan. A preheated pan, that was obvious. And then I'm just gonna use a potato masher and just mash these up. You could do this beforehand if you want in the blender or whatever, but I like to do it in here. But next you just wanna add all the spices to it. So I'm just gonna be putting in between a half a teaspoon and a teaspoon of each of these. Garlic powder. Onion powder, we've got chili spice. I'm actually gonna add a little extra of this because this is such a good seasoning. We've got cumin, just a touch of salt. Then we've got some nutritional yeast. Well, this teaspoon is no good with nutritional yeast. We gotta just put it in there. There we go. It's probably a couple tablespoons of nutritional yeast. Then I'm gonna go ahead and just chop up some of these nacho slices. <laughs> I'm just gonna add a quarter of a cup of water. So if you don't do this, it all kind of ends up being a little bit dry. So you could probably even use a little bit more than a quarter of a cup. And then you just wanna mash all this together. So you just wanna let this simmer for really as long as you want. And if uh, it keeps simmering away and it starts drying out, you can add some water back into that if you want. So I'm just gonna let this simmer for about 10 minutes. So everything's done cooking and now all that's left to do is roll up that burrito and plate up the burrito bowl. So let's do it. Wow. So yeah, after letting this sit for 15 or 20 minutes or so and tasting it now, the flavors are so, so much stronger. All right, so here's that rice all cooked up and it turned out really good. I just had a little sample of it. So first we're gonna put on the rice. I always overfill these things, so I'm gonna try and be modest with this one. And then we've got the beans here, and these are so, so good. I'm telling you guys, if you take one recipe away from this whole burrito making process, this should be the one, because man, these beans are so good. And we've got those sauteed veggies to go in here as well. Oh gosh, this is getting really full. And we can't forget the pico de gallo. So you wanna use a slotted spoon with this if you're making a burrito wrap like this because if you get all that liquid and everything in here, it's just gonna be far too messy and uh, wet. So that's why a slotted spoon comes in handy here. Whatever, look how good this looks. And then I'm just gonna put some of these fresh pea shoots in there just to add a little freshness to this whole thing. And then I do have some avocado, but Judging by the feel of it, I am not optimistic that's gonna be a good one. Let's check it out. Oh no, that's never good when it comes apart like that. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, no, smells bad. Nah, not worth it. All right, now it's just time to roll it up. So I have to admit, I have rolled a few things in my life here, but I'm not the best at rolling burritos. This is way too full. What was I thinking? Oh my gosh. All right, okay. Wow, it actually worked. <laughs> Look at that. That looks pretty vegan. <laughs> no, it looks really good. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this on a plate. All right, next, I'm gonna put together that burrito bowl. 
So as obsessed as I am with burritos, Crystal doesn't love burritos quite as much as I do. So that's why I'm making a burrito bowl here. This is gonna be for her. All right, so you just make a nice little nest there with the lettuce for all the goodness we're gonna put in there. Oh yeah. All right, we're gonna start with this uh, poor man's version of Spanish rice. <laughs> and then we got those veg. Trying to keep it kind of pretty for the thumbnail. I don't know if it's working. And then we've got those never fried, refried beans. <laughs> I guess those are gonna go right on. I feel like I should have done it in this order. This is gonna look a little nicer. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> Shh. No one has to know. And then we've got the pico de gallo. This is gonna bring a lot of flavor to this dish. So you could use like regular salsa, of course, but I'm telling you, the amount of time that it takes to put something like this together, it is so, so worth it. Like how the heck do you plate this and make it look nice, huh? And then just some of these guys, because we're fancy as heck around here. Just them right on the top. Wow, look at that. Woo! God, please don't fall apart. All right. All right, so now just the taste test. So I know it's gonna be good because I've been on like a burrito kick lately. I'm not gonna lie, and I've, I've been eating a lot of these lately, but uh, here we go. Oh my god. Mmm. Wow. Wow. Okay. So it's incredible. It's absolutely amazing. Like, best burrito ever. I'm telling you guys. Um, so yeah, just lots of different flavors going on. I mean, everything that we cooked had a slightly different flavor, but they all go together so, so well in the end. My gosh. I'm not even missing out on the avocado. Uh, I have some like Daya cheese in the fridge too. I could grate that and put it on here, but I'm telling you, it's not missing anything. I know that this is gonna taste just as good, but I'll save it for Crystal. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you guys, I think you're really, really gonna like this one. And even if you don't make it into a burrito, like I said, you can use any of these elements on their own. I mean, if you're just cooking up some brown rice and you want it flavored, just throw some salsa in there, you know? If you want like some salsa and you don't have any in the house, just make some, make some pico de gallo instead. Uh, and those beans, man, those beans, just incredible. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope it gave you some ideas. Definitely tag me. If you guys make anything like this on Instagram, tag me because I love seeing your creations. I love seeing what you do with my recipes and uh, when you replicate them and then especially when you add on to them as well. So thank you so much for watching this video. I do appreciate it. Definitely hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't so you can see more from me. Leave your comments down below. Let me know your thoughts and I will see you guys soon with another video. Bye.